This is the podcast for STEM Biology, Chapter 2, Section 1. In this section, we will cover the structure of the atom, including chemical symbols and the subatomic particles. First thing we're going to talk about are the chemical symbols. Um, chemical symbols are used to represent the element names. Um, when you are writing out a symbol, the capitals matter. You have to capitalize the first letter. All, all element symbols contain one capital letter followed by a lowercase letter, if necessary. Must be written correctly or will be wrong on your quiz or test. For example, if I ask you for the chemical symbol of cobalt, and the correct answer is on the left. Cobalt is a capital C and then a little O. And cobalt is a metal that forms bright blue solid compounds. If you messed up and you wrote the capital O, then you are writing the symbol for a compound, not an element, and that is a poisonous gas. So you must write it precisely. The elements that you must know and memorize the symbols for um, are on the periodic table, elements 1 through 20. You will receive a periodic table in the following class. These are the ones you need to remember. H equals hydrogen. Helium is HE. Lithium, LI. Beryllium, BE. Boron, just a B. Carbon, C. Nitrogen, N. Oxygen, O. Fluorine, F. Fluorine is, a lot of people get that one wrong and they put FL. So make sure you know it's just F. Neon is NE. A lot of people mix up the nitrogen and the neon. So you got to know which ones are which. And then sodium is NA. Moving on. Magnesium, MG. Aluminum, AL. Silicon, SI. Phosphorus, just P, sulfur, S, chlorine, Cl, argon, Ar, potassium is K, calcium, Ca. Um, there are other elements you must know, and you will get a memorization chip sheet in the next class, but these are the other ones also. Um, you will have a quiz. Um, coming up on memor memorizing the elements. Here are the other elements you must know. Silver is AG, gold, AU, bromine, BR, iron, FE, mercury, HG, nickel, NI, lead, PB, tin, SN, manganese, MN. Okay, the next part of section 2.1 are the parts of an atom. Um, definition, an atom is the basic unit of matter. Every element that you are going to learn the symbols for is composed of one type of atom. Atoms are the smallest pieces of matter that have the properties of that element. There are three components to an atom. They are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons for this class will be abbreviated with a P plus. The plus refers to the charge. Protons have a charge of plus one. Neutrons are abbreviated N with an O superscript. The O refers to the no charge that a neutron has, which means they are neutral. Electrons are abbreviated E with a negative, and that refers to the charge of a minus one. Protons and neutrons are located inside the atom in the nucleus. The nucleus is positively charged. The nucleus is surrounded by a cloud that contains the electrons. We call this the electron cloud. Atoms of different elements differ in the number of protons. So that's what makes each element different, are the number of protons. Here's a diagram that you will need to know. So this is a picture of an atom or a model of the atom. In the middle is the nucleus, and you can see there are two different subatomic particles there. 
you have your neutrons that don't have any symbol on them, and then your protons have the plus charge. Um, and then in the outside of the nucleus is your electron cloud, and that's where you will find your electrons. And notice that the electrons have a negative charge. All right, so in general, atom is found in the nucleus. Um, inside the nucleus, you will find protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which have a neutral charge. You also have the electron cloud, where the electrons are, and those have a negative charge. A couple things to know. Most of the atom's mass is going to be found in the nucleus. So the protons and the neutrons is what's going to make up the atom's mass. Um, there's a thing called the atomic number. You can see that on the periodic table. Like number one, the atomic number for one is going to be hydrogen. That one refers to the number of protons that that element has. Um, if it is a neutral atom, then the atomic number will also equal the number of electrons. So if it's a neutral atom, protons equal electrons. Um, another term is quark. A quark is a very small particle that make up protons and neutrons. Scientists have confirmed six different quarks. To study quarks, scientists accelerate particles and smash them into protons. The collision then will break apart the proton. Okay, atomic models. How small are atoms? If you think about it. Um, Here's a way to visualize it. 24,400 atoms, if they are stacked on top of each other, will be the thickness of a piece of foil. So that's how small they are. Um, so because it's so small, scientists create these models, like the picture I showed you, to help visualize atoms. Models, these models that they are creating are based on indirect evidence. There have been many different models over the years of what an atom looks like. When you take chemistry, STEM chem, or if you move on to AP chem, or if you just take um, regular chem, you will do a, um, you will learn about the history of the atom. In this class, we are not concerned with the history of the atom. Um, I would just like you to know the current model of the atom, which is the one that we already talked about, and that is letter E at the bottom right. Feel free to read the rest of the different models from the history. But in E, you can see that's the picture where the nucleus is in the middle and the electron cloud is around it. Okay, it's called the electron cloud model, the model that is now used. The electron cloud is the area where electrons are most likely to be found. It is 100,000 times larger than the diam diameter of the nucleus. So, for example, if there was a paper clip in the football stadium, the paperclip would represent the nucleus, and the football stadium around it represents the electron cloud. It is very, very large. Okay, another term is called orbital. The orbital is the region where there is a 90% probability of finding the electron in the electron cloud. Um, you can't pinpoint the location of an electron, okay? It's constantly moving and orbiting. Um, the density of the dots in this diagram represent the degree of probability. So if you look at where it's most dense, which area is the most dense, is obviously closest to the nucleus, and that's where you would most likely find an electron. Um, you will learn more about orbitals in chemistry, but there are different shapes of them, and this is the pathways that the electron can move. So electrons can go in circles, or they can do like a figure eight, or way more complex movement. Inside the electron cloud, um, we have electrons that are various distances away from the nucleus. The closer energy levels have less energy and can hold fewer electrons. Um, for example, the closer you sit to the teacher in your class, like in elementary school, the less that you'll be able to move around because your teacher is right there. Each energy level, which is abbreviated N, can hold 2N squared electrons. So for example, in the first energy level, which is the closest to the nucleus, that level can only hold two max electrons. 
and energy level 2, it can hold 8. And most atoms strive to have 8 in their energy level, the second energy level. Um, energy level 3 would have 18, for example, and energy level 4 would have 32. In this class, we would only be working with energy level 1 and 2, and we will be learning how to work with that information during class. That ends section 2.1.